Should be good. Welcome right. everyone. Well, very bloody good. Um, that's a hell of an intro. We've got Johannes Denim Destroyer here for the first win or lose podcast, and uh, kicking things off on a good note. Uh, Johannes, just showing us your musical challenge. Hey, Win, how are you? <laughs> yeah, doing good. Thanks. Uh, it's, it's been a while since we uh, last spoke at the uh, team camp, but uh, what's been happening with you? Um. Actually, now since uh, two weeks, it's going on pretty well. Uh, before, um, yeah, with the corona, we had a uh, very strict uh, rules from the from the state, so we we had to stay at home and um, try to to practice there because you were just allowed to go out for uh, shopping, as uh, kind of um, for the grocery shopping. Yeah, and yeah, that was the, the for two months <laughs> um, this very strict rules so yeah i tried to 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 keep in shape yeah i tried it's pretty hard just it's at a- home also if i'm lucky that i have a pretty good yard where i can um, be active and do some stuff but it was pretty hard here in italy but now yeah. we're lucky that um, it's getting a little bit easier now and since two almost two weeks now i'm uh, riding almost every day every day on the downhill bike but also on enduro bike and i have a lot of fun (laughs) all right yeah well bloody good um we'll start off uh well i just want to start off to uh get to know where the racing started for you and uh how how it all came to be that where you're at now Basically, yeah. <laughs> where you're where you're from and how you started riding. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's a a long story with um all aspects of uh, downhill. I went uh, of biking. I went through. Um, I started um. Let's start with the racing. I started racing uh, when I was uh, six years old. Here in uh, my hometown in Bozzano, there was a, a little race, a youth race, um, where actually my brother brought me to. So, and it was a cross country race. Yeah. And actually, I did uh, pretty well. I, I got third. And <laughs> maybe that helped me uh, to already there to keep me motivated to go on because yeah. it's. Uh, Pretty cool when you're young and you go on the podium already yeah, yeah. at the first race. <laughs> so I liked uh, this feeling, and and so I went on with uh, cross country racing um, till 2010. All right, so quite a long it's, time of uh, cross country. Yeah, I did uh, a lot of cross country racing. Um, I think uh, it was uh, really good uh, to start my career with that. Because yep. uh, you you learn uh, really really good uh, uh, about the bike, uh, how the bike works, and you get the sensibility for the for the riding. And yeah, I I think it was really good. Yeah. So 2000, I came to 2010. I still was racing um, cross country, but the problem is that um, I think it was around 16 years old. Or so, 15, 16 years, 70 maybe. Then uh, cross country in this age is uh, really hard because uh, all your friends uh, start going party. to the first party, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and and you would like to go there as well, and then yeah. maybe you go there as well, but the next day you have a race, <laughs> and that fits not so good together. Yeah, for me and. <laughs> So yeah, you went you well, went to too well, many parties and you couldn't uh, keep cross country racing. <laughs> I I would not say that this is the real reason so that I could go couldn't go on with uh, cross country racing, but mm, for sure it was uh, one of the reasons. 
<laughs> and you also found uh, uh, downhill more enjoyable, probably. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I did my first uh, downhill race, like, I think it was 2010. Just one race. Um, it was in Abitone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was pretty fun because we had uh, rental bikes also there. <laughs> uh, I went there with my, with my brother. Yeah. And that was not so often on a downhill bike. Um, but it was... <laughs> Yeah, pretty funny because I got this rental bike and uh, started going down the hill and first corner I crashed. Yeah. Because uh but I didn't know what really happened, so I was a little bit confused. <laughs> but then I, I saw that the, the, the brakes were uh, the wrong uh, way. <laughs> the wrong way, exactly like yeah, the, yeah. the the motocrosses do it. Oh you you have your you have your brakes the wrong way around to uh, clear this one up. What do you mean? I, I have them like the motocross bike, but uh, yeah, I know, I know. That, that's the right way. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I had it the right way, but <laughs> so but it, but yeah, it was wrong for you. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. So yeah, I changed, I swept the brakes and I raced, and it went uh, pretty well. Yeah. I don't remember. I think in my category was because. Uh, yeah, I was junior or no, even before junior I, it was. I got seven, but oh, yeah. Yeah, under I, under seventeen. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I had so much fun there, and of course, uh, finding a race where you're not dead uh, by the end of the day because cross country was always so hard and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. You had fun, and you still wanted to go up the hill after the race and have fun. The year after, I um, went to the same place as well, and that's where I met um, uh, Tommaso Ancelotti. Already I was, in, uh, in the, the second year of riding. Exactly, 2011. Yep. Because and, I also in 2011, I was still on uh, cross-country riding, but I yep. wanted to do a little bit more um, downhill. Yeah. So I went again to Abitone, um, and... Um, did, Tomaso, did you have, he gave did you have your own bike. bike by then, or you had your own bike no. or not? No, I still, I still practiced, yeah, on, the, on a rental bike, but on a better <laughs> rental one. Rental bike? So you didn't even yeah. buy a downhill bike to ride at home yet? No, but after <laughs> Abitone, I got a bike. Because oh, yeah. there were, it was uh, testing, the, or testing, I was uh, racing with the Ancelotti. Yeah. And compared to this rental bike I had there, it was... So great and yeah. the, the the race went also really well i got uh, second in junior yep. back on the podium and i was happy again and uh, that's where i maybe decided to 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 do it more serious mm -hmm. then I, I i got the bike yeah so i could uh, practice at home yep. yeah and that's uh, where it actually started so and, and the actually, year after Actually, where you live is perfect for training for downhill. Yeah, we have uh, really good uh, opportunities. Um, or we would have, let's say it like this. Because um, where I live, it's a pretty touristic place. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, not so... They're not the, 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 the city, the politicians, I don't know who decided, but... They're a little bit, uh, we're always a little bit against uh, mountain biking. Yeah. And that's why many trails around uh, the city are are forbidden for bikers. Yeah. But, so, but you have two, uh, two good downhill tracks. Yeah, of course. And also, if you go a little bit out of my region, you are uh, pretty close to also to Finale. You just go four hours and then you're there. Or yeah. to um, San Remo. Then close is also Paganella Bike Park. Yeah. But it's true, and yeah. We live here in the middle of the mountains and very good good uh, place to, to ride bikes and yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you live in uh, Bolzano City. Exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, also City. also your house or the house next to your house looks like a castle. Oh yeah, yeah, because you saw it. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> you live in the castle. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't live in the castle. Unfortunately, you live next uh, to the castle. <laughs> I live next to the castle, and this house where I live, yeah. it used to be the, the stable. 
So that's where the, the, the cows have been in the past. <laughs> so I just, oh, yeah. I just live in the stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're no, not, no. Not, not quite really in the castle yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really nice. Yeah, All right, perfect. Yeah. And, the, and you rode for Ancelotti, which is also a brand that I rode for when I first started in to, yeah. into the uh, European racing back in uh, 2009. I did one year with them and Tommaso, so I know how that all works. And uh, pretty pretty uh, impressive what they can do out of the garage, the Ancelotti family. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's crazy. But also, if you see, there were many good riders uh, on Ancelotti and yeah. uh, grow, uh, grow on the Ancelotti and went faster. So, yeah. uh, so it's a very cool family and how they how they do it like all by the, themselves it's very yeah. good and always open for 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 new ideas and also when they seem sometimes crazy they they would let you try and i was uh, really growing on this bike and started going fast also on it mm -hmm. yeah i remember um alberto always checking that the uh, suspension was working properly with his palms on top of the oh, yeah. fork <laughs> And then they'd yeah. pull it apart and rebuild it again. They always uh, had the suspension working good. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Also, Tommaso, I was not so much uh, talking to Alberto, but I was more with Tommaso. Yeah. But he was the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always touching, very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> they like the sus and, uh, sensitive suspension. Yeah, and the, the the bike has to stick on the on the ground. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they make the rear shock themselves as well, so it's pretty impressive yeah. uh, engineering it's that crazy. they can do. Yeah, in their garage. <laughs> yeah, and if you see yeah. how how small they are and yeah, yeah. how uh, how good they they are. <laughs> it's a proper Italian brand, really. Yeah, the bike. It's it like, is. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a lot of uh, Italian motorsport brands, small but uh, mm -hmm. pretty special, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. And then uh, how how long you rode for Ancelotti? Because I think I remember 2013 when I did one race in the Italian Cup. I raced you. Oh, yeah. In Bormio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, actually was uh, never really in the Ancelotti factory team. Mm -hmm. If you would go. I was, my team was always this local team here from uh, Bolzano. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing uh, downhill. But I was, of course, uh, racing on his bikes, and it was like having been with him in the team or having him as a, as a team boss. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long was it. Uh, so I won also one uh, national title on his bike. That was 2014. Yeah. And... Yeah, actually, it was um, I finished with him or oh, with Ancelotti uh, when I was doing one year uh, on enduro with yep. enduro. So I was racing oh, yeah. also one year. Enduro. I remember in finale. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. That you was, were tired. Uh, hard, really <laughs> tired race because I was uh, injured. Yeah. So I didn't train so much for the race, but <laughs> yeah, but I went through and <laughs> yeah, yeah. was really happy about. It. But you got some good results on the Ancelotti bike also within the World Cup? Um, I got actually pretty uh, good results. Um, in um, It was in Canada. So it was one of the first uh, World Cup races uh, in Elite. Mm -hmm. I went uh, to Canada and America with some uh, Italian guys. Yeah. I was also Loris and Ellie. And uh, I was doing... Pretty well there. I think it was uh, 37th in oh, yeah. Sweet. Uh, in uh, Montsenan yep. yeah, and 55th in um, Windham. Oh, yeah. Windham. What was really uh, great for me because it was uh, first first year elite and yeah and was really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and I was. Uh, I was never really happy with that because I want uh, want to be uh, more in front. Like yeah, it was yeah. good for the moment, and I thought, well, there's still 36 riders in front of me. <laughs> so I wanted to do better. So you always were looking to to go for the top positions in the World Cup, even. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I think uh, you have to to think like that to reach this. Yeah, this, yeah. Um, this, yeah, this uh, position. And then, and then actually, after Ancelotti, you rode uh, with the Mondraker team. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, one year uh, with uh, the MS Mondraker, but uh, it was the the B team, so mm-hmm. development development team. Um, that was also a pretty cool year because I uh, learned a lot, yeah. especially on being uh, well more professional. What I what I was not the year after, but <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Uh, but also on the social media stuff, and I learned how important this is for the brands, and yeah. and for the companies and for the sponsors to be really active there. Um, and that was really good for me. I was I don't know what it was. The racing was not so good. Maybe I was a little bit unlucky, or I didn't had it uh, on the race day. Yeah. So, so you I were putting really, in more effort than, than in yeah, I was, the next year. Exactly. I was actually putting a lot of effort in this year with Monreco. Yeah. Um, because I also contacted them and and then you really want to and do. Maybe it was, uh, was a little bit too, too stiff or I don't know what it was. But yeah. the results were not those what I was hoping for. And yeah, then the season finished, and I yeah. was not so happy. <laughs> and then after that, you you pretty much decided to focus on work, mm-hmm. and, and that's exactly. uh, the family business as a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can uh, yeah exactly. Let us know what what sort of restaurant and what the food is. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so after the year of Monraker, I was not so happy, and I actually decided, how you said, to 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 start working because I couldn't earn money with biking, so I had to think about because you get year by year older, and you think, and yeah. I was not so sure anymore if I could really reach uh, the top twenty positions in the World Cup, and that was also no team what I could go with the year after and I was not so motivated anymore yeah then we uh, yeah we we um, created this uh, restaurant um, in Munich yeah my brother and me it's a traditional South Tyrolean restaurant where we uh, we serve um, a mainly knödel mm-hmm. I don't know some of you maybe know it but <laughs> knödel is a uh, is a uh, a dish, um, it's a round dish made out of uh, bread dough, and you can add uh, different flavors to it, like spinach or bacon or the classical ones. Now, I, I've been to the restaurant, so I can say it's pretty good. Exactly. So, so you you can tell me yeah. maybe uh, how you you liked it. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a solid nine out of ten. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good. What, what should we do? What should we do to to make out of the nine or ten? Ah, <laughs> uh, you have to play your uh, instrument at the uh, restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. soft rolling. Yeah. What What is this yeah. instrument called that you actually play? It's um, well, we call it here a uh, Oh yeah. Maybe more people know it under the name accordion. Oh, yeah, accordion. But the yeah. accordion is more with the with the piano thing. Yeah, and this is yeah. uh, traditional South Tyrolean music. Yeah, it's um, traditional for for this area here. Yeah, but it's also it's actually this music comes from Slovenia. Oh yeah, sweet. <laughs> but uh, they love it here also. Yeah, <laughs> but it's so, also traditional for us. Yeah. So back to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, a form of a dumpling, pretty much. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you were working pretty much full time leading into the uh, 2019 season. Yeah, exactly. So we started uh, with the restaurant in February. Yeah. 
and I was not even thinking on biking. So we already started, already started before with the, all the works, what had to be done to build up the restaurant and so. But then we had the opening in February and I was working then. In the beginning, I was working two months without a break. Yeah. So <laughs> I did not and, even and think what, about to... How, how many hours is that normally per day at the restaurant? Well, in the beginning it was uh, really intense because uh, I didn't have the rhythm yet. I didn't really know what what to do. So then you normally start earlier. Yeah. So I started maybe at uh, in the beginning at eight nine mm-hmm. to to make the, the shopping for salads and stuff like that. Yeah. Then we open at uh, eleven thirty restaurant. Then it's uh, we have a little break in the afternoon, but more or less it's the whole day service. Yeah. And then you finish sometimes really late, around uh, 12, 1, especially in the beginning. Yeah. Because I beginning I let everybody come in. Uh, also, if you normally should already have closed at 11. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then uh, by the time I, I I got used to it and uh, I knew how everything works. So I could also sleep a little bit longer and I started also closing a little bit earlier because uh, <laughs> I saw the people who would come late, they normally just drink and they stay there forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just have to wait that they go out then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, nah, then we, we close straight at uh, 11, 11.30 yeah. and then you can go to sleep. So it's not much... Mm-hmm. You didn't really do much training leading into the 2019 season. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I was before the first uh, race in Maribor was for me. Was the first World yeah, Cup Maribor. Maribor? Maribor, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I bought the bike and I was, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know. Suddenly, I got the, uh, came to the idea I could race maybe Maribor because I still had the points. Yeah. And just for fun because I had free weekend, and mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to watch the World Cup and just just be there next to the track. Yeah, yeah. It's I, the same uh, same for me when uh, I yeah. do the videos. I don't want to. Don't like. I, I don't want to go just to do videos. I still want to race because it's it's the best part of the weekend, I guess. Just, exactly. just being part of the race is pretty enjoyable, even if it goes good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, true. So that's why I decided to, uh, to race. I uh, went went down with my dad uh, to to Maribor, and yeah, uh, obviously with with no training, five times on the bike, and <laughs> I think that pretty was it. So, so your but, goals. Your goals for the 2019 season were not very high anyway. Or you didn't no, even know the, if you I wanted to do the races. Yeah, I, I was just going there for fun. I was sure that I would not qualify also. Yeah. Uh, in Maribor. But then actually, um, I was pretty lucky, I think, to get yeah, qualified. Because rain, there was this lot. weird weather. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I had pretty good conditions. So I qualified really close, 57 or something. Yeah. And and yeah, the race I gave everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, finished uh, 55, 55th, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Then uh, when you you start early on a race day, you have to watch everybody come down. You know how it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I don't know something in me uh, told me. That feels so shit to go to races <laughs> with no practice and yeah and I don't know somewhere there came a big motivation to 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 go on this season because I had the points I made some points in also Maribor yeah and then I decided uh, from race to race you went to Maribor and you sat there to finish getting beaten by nearly every rider that came down in the final and then from there you yeah. got motivated that was the the turning point yeah exactly. Because it sucked us a little bit because I felt actually really good on my yeah. race run. 
And they so I thought, you. yeah, maybe that. <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. I thought actually that was a good run, and uh, it uh, maybe I could do a good position. Yeah. But then, yeah, I came down. Everybody beat me, and yeah, some somewhere this motivation came from, and. Um, the weeks after, I started uh, training pretty hard. Yeah. Um, to to go to Leogang. So that yeah, yeah we we went. Uh, I came and rode with you one one day there before Leogang. Oh yeah, was that in between yeah. these two races? Yeah, yeah. With Gusty. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah. was cool. Yeah, with yeah. Gusty. <laughs> yeah, you were crazy. You may well. Make me making me pedaling up the hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the downhill bike. Downhill bike, hill climbs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was yeah. Uh, really impressed how how fit you were in pedaling. Yeah, yeah. Because this was not just when we came down and we, we took this road. It's really steep road. <laughs> yeah, it's real I steep. was trying to pedal because yeah, I was trying to pedal, but I, I stopped because I was not strong enough, and you were just <laughs> going up like a bike. It was impressive. Yeah, yeah, I like to uh, do a good hill climb myself, especially yeah. on the downhill bike. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I prefer actually the the downhill. <laughs> and I think I think um Gusty he likes it as well, Gusty Wildhaber, he he likes a good yeah, uh, were... uphill climb. <laughs> yeah, I seen I uh, had had done, uh, ten hours road yeah, by yeah. road yesterday I think yeah. Right? Bike yeah. Ride. yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, I I asked myself, bah, "You have to be mentally so fit for that, <laughs> not only physically." <laughs> uh, you just get used to it; it gets easy. But um, you prefer to go downhill. Yeah. Well, now um, I, I like to go uh, to make some tours yeah. on the enduro bike. But really, uh, um, in a high altitude, yeah, yeah. to with nice view and stuff like that, that makes you feel really, really good. Yeah, yeah it's not because nice. just down hitting sometimes miss a little bit the the, the the physical challenge, you know. Yeah, yeah. but but mm-hmm. so back back to where you were, you were, you trained a lot more than mm-hmm. than normal for layer game. Yeah. Yeah, normal in this year. <laughs> so yeah. I started training. I was uh, started riding my my bike, so also my enduro bike in Munich every yeah. day. Well, that's another point, as you know, it's <laughs> hard to train in Munich. Yeah, but, but somehow I don't know. Maybe it's also good because you think always this is not the best place to to train downhill. Yeah. yeah. But somehow you you use every little downhill section. To oh. yeah, you, you you use it really full gas, well, so you, also you go probably down. Probably similar to the a lot of the guys in the UK, they don't have very big hills, but they they're all very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because maybe you think so much. Oh, I have to go fast. I have to go faster because yeah. the the <laughs> the place is so easy and yeah, I don't know. I think it's uh it's mentally pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, uh, when I, then uh, with the work, I we had a pretty good uh, solution. So yeah. uh, we started uh, to work um, kind of part time. So yeah. I have I had one week at uh, work and one mm-hmm. week off for training. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, actually the the point. What. Uh, where I, I I started seeing a light to do also good in uh, in the downhill races because I could train I could go home uh, yep. and ride real trails. So and that was really. Mm-hmm. When you went to Leo Gang, you had much higher expectations for your racing, or you're still not setting. Any... Well, I I was I uh, I had I didn't have the whole year really high expectation. I was really riding more. Let's say, um, not to make good result, I wanted to ride really fast, to go mm-hmm. as fast as I can, yep. not looking on a result. Because, yeah, if you do it normally, it should work out, I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And yeah, I went to Liergang with uh, this expectation to go fast. And it actually happened that I was not so bad there. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, I think I finished in qualifying 16 or what was yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, something in 16th? the top 20, yeah. Exactly, and that was really, really a big uh, thing for me because I really did not expect it, especially with this special season. Yeah. And I was, um, I never was in the top 20, and and uh, I knew I would start very late the next day. And <laughs> I got, I started uh, getting uh, pretty nervous. Nervous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Being the first time so far in front for me yeah was such a big thing and yeah i remember i <laughs> i didn't have the best sleep <laughs> because i was thinking a little bit ah oh, so cool <laughs> now i'm i'm not finally i'm not eight seconds back i'm just four seconds back and yeah, yeah. that feels good because you you see oh yeah it, it it can it can go it's possible to it, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my English is just rough. No, no, I'm it's so good. Sorry. <laughs> Have <laughs> another beer, you, you come out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but whatever, and then, uh, yeah, we came to race day. I was uh, pretty nervous being the first time with with the big guys up there. And I remember, yeah, I was there alone. Yeah. And I never saw how the situation was in a start uh, when you start late. I didn't know how the, the really the fastest ones in this world how they warm up and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's pretty but, uh, um it's pretty tense up there. It's quite quiet. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. super quiet. Yeah, it's yeah. completely the opposite of what, uh, what I was used to before. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, every... I was, uh, yeah. Everyone just doing their own thing and uh, no one really looking yeah. at anyone. It's quite, it's quite yeah. uh, intense. The first time when you go <laughs> up there like that, it's pretty intense. Yeah, exactly. I felt a little bit, I don't know, like an idiot because <laughs> I was there uh, up the hill in my, <laughs> in my jeans. Yeah. And I was just running up and down the hill for warming up. Yeah. And I don't know, it felt on one part really good mm. but on uh, another side i felt like wow a little bit unreal <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah whatever did all this all this thing made me pretty nervous yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's it why i uh, definitely does fuck it think. up in yeah. uh, the race i think but whatever the, the then the race was also actually a good thing for me because i got the uh, 31st yeah, and uh, that was the best result so far for me, and, and that's and why I still you really got, happy. You you say you fucked it up, but uh, you got thirty first. What what happened? Yeah, yeah. Well, now from the start to the end, it was always a little bit out of line. Yeah, yeah. you know how it is when you when you have two chains pressure the speed sometimes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I never felt it before, but this time I felt it. I think Actually, it, happens, it, sucks me, it sucks a little bit. Happens more yeah. when when you first time you qualify good. It's pretty uh, exactly. stressful. <laughs> it was yeah, and everything was silent. And it was also weird because when you start late, it's what I figured out this year. You actually can uh, concentrate better the uh, the first I don't know one two minutes on track because yep. it's much more silent. Yeah, because yeah. people, when I used to start, uh, yeah, they are wearing the, the whole yeah. Exactly. The yeah, yeah. But then when the race goes on, they all go down and then there is nobody anymore in the start. Yeah, yeah. it's and quite quiet. That was yeah. really interesting. Yeah. But the race itself, yeah, I had some mistakes. Um, but please send me one race, race where you don't have a mistake. <laughs> so it's uh, normal, but yeah. overall I was uh, really happy. Yeah, maybe saying fucked it up is not the right word or the right words. It's but more. You, you felt like you didn't ride how you could have. 
Yeah, of course, compared to yeah. the day before, especially also I was maybe watching the, the result. Yeah, yeah. It's 50 positions, I fall back. Yeah. But it was all right. Actually, I was really happy to come down the hill because when you qualify so good, normally for the first time, it's also not impossible that you you do some uh, stupid stuff, crashing or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. So yeah. my aim was to come to the finish line with yeah. no big mistakes and crashes. Uh, that's good. And uh, it also became the, uh, I think you were the first or the second winner of my privateer award at that, that race. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was also not expecting that. Um, yeah, as you remember, I was already on the way uh, back to Munich to work. Yeah, yeah, straight after the race, we're trying to call you and you're already driving home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I uh, didn't want to, to go in the traffic, so I said, yeah, just let's leave. I'm not yeah. on the podium, so <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. yeah respectful to stay there and watch the people, but... You know, as my focus was not so much on the biking last year, it was more on the, on the racing, on the working. Yeah, yeah. I just said, yeah, let's go. And what actually, should I do here? <laughs> actually, we made a, a award for you out of a piece of cardboard, but uh, you weren't there to collect it, and then we put it in the rubbish. Then you wanted it. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't get it yet. No, no, we we put it in the rubbish because because we thought oh, really? you you didn't want it. So then. And oh, then, you and put then in the you rubbish. wanted it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ah. So it was well, a bit of a disaster, but uh, you know. Maybe you can make uh, one, uh, another one. Oh, the original <laughs> was, was pretty, pretty special. <laughs> yeah, I know, but there's a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there there was a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, and and this race also became the race where you uh, got the name the Denim Destroyer too. Yeah, exactly. Um, this name uh, actually created uh, Ben Cathro yeah. from Cathro Vision. He's doing always these uh, great videos where you can check a little bit uh, the lines. And yeah. he's checking actually the lines for you. <laughs> yeah, he's and, good. And yeah, I, of course, nobody uh, knew me. Well, still, I'm not famous, but that's where, the, where I got a little bit more uh to say well um, no. into the, well yeah exactly yeah. and and i think getting on the the live stream also helped that when you're racing on the live stream with the jeans oh on. yeah yeah exactly that was another point yeah yeah it was the first time uh, on the live stream also mm -hmm. yeah and then, that was uh, uh good for for getting yeah known <laughs> yeah every, everyone wanted to get behind the uh working racer the privateer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, we had two people ask questions about the jeans. We had Al Sid. He asked, "Do you wear Levi's?" Uh, what was the question? Do you wear Levi's? No. <laughs> no <laughs> Levi's. So what? What was your jean of choice <laughs> in 2019? Yeah. It was a. Uh... I don't know even the brand because I bought it in a in a, in a big store. Yeah. I'm not uh, telling you the store because uh, <laughs> maybe it's not so good to tell the story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, let me tell the story. <laughs> oh, you want the story? Yeah, yeah. You get, you might as well get the whole story because why? First of all, why do you race in jeans? Because I don't, I don't see the uh, the benefit. Yeah, that's a question what many people uh, think or say. <laughs> yeah, I know it could make sense, but actually, um, it's maybe the first time I raced uh, in the jeans. It was really just for for fun, or I don't know. I just felt like to to uh, to race in the jeans. Yeah. And the, but and there's you, not no. Uh, but you, but you believe that they're more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, I don't believe it. I'm sure about it <laughs> because um, it is it is so because um, it's really cool to uh, to have the the stretchable jeans. That's yeah. really important. If you have yeah, normal yeah. jeans, of course, it would not make no sense because yeah. just stiff and stuff. But they're they're very stretchable and they're very thin cotton. Mm-hmm. And then you have um, many pockets. Yeah. But the good thing is in the jeans, and you, you don't can need fit, to have a. You can fit your extra large uh, iPhone for the work calls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they are pretty tight, so you don't even have to close it with a zip or something. Yeah, yeah. I was also racing with the wallet, just you don't see it in a race. <laughs> I had also the wallet. Is that only practice? There's no picture. Is that only for practice, or is that in the race as well? The wallet. No race. <laughs> what what for? You can uh, I don't know. I don't, a coffee oh, the wallet, the... maybe. <laughs> maybe not in every race, but I had it also in the race. <laughs> the but one... that, uh... yeah. You're going to buy a coffee on halfway down, or what's the plan? You never know what happens, especially when you're a privateer. Yeah, yeah, uh, you might. If you break something and, I don't know, you have you a puncher have before for... the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy from, from somebody's wheel, I don't know. yeah. <laughs> Well, gotta... it's really more uh, joking. <laughs> but I have to say, I also in the past I was always uh, racing with the with the wallet and the and the, and phone, the phone in my yeah. pocket. Also, then... when I have uh, had uh, downhill pants. Yeah. Because um, I don't know the English word, but it uh, brings luck to me, you know. I, it makes you more balanced if you what? have the wallet and the phone. It's not the balance. I just say uh, the suspension uh, works better. Yeah, because you're heavier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a little on. balance on each leg. But you also have the uh, iPhone Max. No, it was just the the the, the thing what was really big. Oh, the, the color. Oh yeah, it was the ah, true. It was the plus. Now oh, the yeah, new well, one. It was it was the big one, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Do you say? Uh, hang on. You say lucky charm when you yeah, bring something. Your, what? Oh yeah. So this exactly. was your lucky charm. That's to what have I wanted to say. The wallet and the phone. Yeah, I was doing that also before. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wallet and phone. So, so and we haven't I had any races better. this year, but are you going to take the wallet and phone with you? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the wallet. I started not bringing the wallet because when you lose the wallet, then. It's shit. Maybe I just uh, but then, a wallet with no ideas. And in it. But then in uh, Wyndham, when you actually came and stayed with our team, you broke your phone in the practice. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, was an expensive, it, was it? expensive day. Oh, no, it wasn't Wyndham. It was um, Snowshoe. You come to stay. Oh, snowshoe. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to tell every story. <laughs> yeah, we have to tell all the stories. But then... Have you got a bigger case yeah, now? But for the actually, phone? also there, I was lucky because it was like a protection. The phone was destroyed, and my my leg was perfect. <laughs> but yeah, 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 but my yeah, it's expensive protection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> L- lucky you won the privateer award, then you could afford a new phone. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but That's um, true. also, what else happened in uh? talking of snowshoe when we were mm-hmm. going up the hill with the car <laughs> oh, you have to tell the story my yeah, English well, is too bad to <laughs> well basically we went for a big ride a trail ride in uh, snowshoe and um, we we got down the hill which was quite a way it was probably 20 or 30 minutes of like up and down descending a good really good track and then uh, George Brannigan of all people got a flat tire so then uh oh he actually didn't even tighten his valve up so it, it just leaked out and then he had a flat tire at the the uh we stopped for a drink at the service station at the bottom he had a flat tire and then he said oh we'll call the our mechanic mateo to come and get us and then we did this mateo's coming down uh george goes past He'd hitched a lift with someone, so he drives past us waving, and Mateo drives past <laughs> us going down. 
And then um, Mateo pulls up beside us going back up and uh, says, oh, do you want to lift back up? So we're like, yeah. And then Martin was on one side of the car and both me and Johannes holding on to the other side of the car. <laughs> I was on like the inside wheel. Oh, he was on the inside wheel and I was on the outside wheel, but behind him. And he's holding on to the passenger window and I'm holding on to the um, the back window that for the back seat. And we're like pretty much overlapping. And then we're getting up quite a bit of speed, going into a corner, a right-hand corner. And he just started leaning off the wheel, pushing into my front wheel. And we're just like totally out of control because his handlebars went into the uh, passenger window and he was like out of control. And then it was ended up being like about a 35 kilometers an hour big crash. Luckily, the car didn't yeah. run us over. That was pretty lucky. And uh, actually, you, <laughs> you broke your 1995 cross-country helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the now everybody knows the real story why I didn't race in uh, snowshoe. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, well, actually, you crashed again in the practice and then broke the phone, though. That was the yeah. real story. But the car the car crash was the first one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little bit uh, stupid by us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you you live and you learn sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we but know now <laughs> not to hold on to the car with two people, just one. Yeah, exactly. Just one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what you yeah. learn. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. uh, it was actually a really big crash, and I gashed my knee as well. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no good. But is, um, your, is your knee fine again? Yeah, it's fine. But I just put a new gash in it the other day, so then it's not quite fine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, back back oh, yeah, to yeah, the there in snowshoe. Oh yeah. Mhm. Yeah, yeah. Back to the um, where we were at. We were at um, Leo Gang. We had one more question from Rob Moore. He wanted to know, will you have denim racing pants this year? If we race this year? Yeah, of course. So uh, we are uh, working, or we were working really hard with uh, Alpine Stars on a, on a good uh, technical downhill pant. Yeah. Uh, with denim cotton, like uh, how I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But of course now all the story with um, with Corona hold it this uh, on and now we are waiting to to restart with this project. Yeah. But definitely uh, I will keep on my jeans. Yeah. Um. What are the benefits of wearing jeans? Just comfortable. Um. They're comfortable if yeah. you have a good cotton. Then I like it to have uh, a lot of uh, pockets, mm -hmm. not just for the phone. It's for keys or <laughs> also for multi tool or stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, it sounds pretty funny, but honestly, I had many downhill pants before. Yeah. But I could never bring stuff because they never have uh, good pockets, or they're too small. Yeah. And and that's why I actually like the. the the, the jeans some and because they are so tight you, you don't have to even to close it with a zip oh yeah so some mm -hmm. some riders thought it uh, made the sport look unprofessional but uh, my argument would have been for them that you weren't a professional at the time exactly yeah <laughs> but then you then now the question is why I still ride them <laughs> <laughs> and now you're a professional but you you just prefer jeans yeah, and of course, uh, honestly, now it became also a little bit my my uh, my Your marketing. Image. How to you say? Your yeah, image. yeah, exactly. It's my name uh, on Instagram. Is then in the story and every uh, everywhere. Yeah, and actually, I'm happy to have this uh, this over name because my normal name is uh, way too difficult, and <laughs> nobody would yeah. remember Johannes von Klebersberg. Yeah easier than in destroyer and were you surprised how many people got behind uh the denim destroyer thing in such a short time over the last season yeah yeah i think um 
it's the whole story what uh, made it uh, interesting for the people. Um, I didn't plan this. Uh, this just came uh, from alone. But yeah, yeah. this is also a little bit how how I am. I was never the really professional one. Mm -hmm. I was more focused to go fast, to have the bike set up that it's not falling apart. And that's it, actually. Pretty yeah. simple. <laughs> uh, it's good. Uh, going on to your next races that you had in 2019, you had some pretty good results as well with, uh, I think, the next one might have been Belle de Sol. Mm -hmm. Or Andorra, maybe. Did you, you went to Andorra. Yeah. yeah, and Andorra was before. Before. Yeah. 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 So Andorra was the the first World Cup where I really changed. Yeah. Uh, my my race speed, because also between uh, Leogang and Andorra, I was training a lot. Also on the downhill mm -hmm. bike, I was working on the suspension. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you could say I got a little bit more. Professional, ah, professional is not the right word. But, but I, I thought about confident as well because you, you knew exactly. you could do it. Then. Exactly, I got confident. I was not so so extremely nervous anymore, and and of course this helped me to to do pretty well there. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, I was the qualifying. I don't remember qualifier results. It was also pretty good, I think. Yeah, ninth, I think, so. yeah. I think. And Andorra. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was ninth. Yeah. yeah. And and also that uh, taking points already in the qualifying. <laughs> was yeah, yeah. Like and top ten uh, of it was okay. It was just uh, the qualify. But yeah, we yeah, know but it's still it's still a race. It's more game, of a it's the same it's race, race as the final. Yeah. Exactly. Especially when you are not uh, sure if you, you if you get if, if it's easy to qualify for you, yeah, or yeah. easy it's for nobody. But I think there are people who are more confident to qualify. Yeah, there are people they... who are protected, and there are people yeah. like me in this moment there to to try just to qualify and have a, another race day the next the day after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. So really good qualify starting even more later. And actually, uh, it was already a three minutes uh, uh, interval, I think. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a long time. That was another. <laughs> yeah, this was another thing what I was not used to, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and I got. I didn't know what to think. You know, normally I'm used to go to the start at one minute, and then after thirty seconds you put up the goggle and then you go. But yeah, yeah. standing there. For, for three minutes, two it, minutes, and just waiting. It seems like yeah. an hour. <laughs> exactly, and you, yeah. you, you, you almost can't can't stay focused because yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost had to had to laugh because it was so weird feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, then the race uh, was uh, really good. Um, I had a big mistake there before the first split. Mm -hmm. And that's where I sat because I was really almost stopping. That's why I was I was pretty far back in the first split. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this uh, waked me up and and I said, okay, now come on. Time to send it. Keep, yeah, keep it focused. Yeah. Maybe not too much sandy, but just keep it focused and keep it easy. Don't yeah, yeah. try too hard. Just just stay smooth and and ride. Yeah. Did uh, this uh, worked pretty well until the maybe last minute of riding. Mm -hmm. That's where I I felt my my um how do you say my being my my whole of training. So oh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, so your lack uh, of training Andorra. kicked in in the last minute. It's exactly. a it's a very physical Andorra. track Andorra oh. too, because you have the mm -hmm. very fast top section and then starts getting steep and it's pretty physical the whole way down yeah exactly and so the last maybe minute i was just trying to hold on my bike and survive 
but it worked. So uh, my yeah. the feeling was really bad. I thought I would be far back, mm-hmm. but at the end it was pretty good, and I finished uh, my first top fifteen result. Yeah. I got fourteenth, yeah. and then of course it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. really uh, cool. And uh, also on the live stream again, so people would have been liking that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that was uh, pretty good for my uh, for my images, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. And mm-hmm. then uh, you, those two results would have pretty given you quite a lot of confidence going to uh, Val de Sol. Exactly. So after yeah. Andorra, I, I had a really hard uh, decision to make, or it was not really a decision, but uh, after Andorra was uh, Leger. Yeah. The, the, right the week after, but it was the week where I uh, had to work. You meant to work. So, yeah, so I missed um, Leger because of work. <laughs> yeah, that was, about that, I was pretty, yeah, of course, upset. Did, and Did you still watch the race? Um. Yeah, I did. Oh yeah. It was a great race. Uh, seeing uh, this French crowd uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a French three. Yeah. This was. But you, I really wanted to race. Uh, you felt bad watching. Yeah, I hate watching. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Because uh, <laughs> if you know you could be there and you have to sell the knödel. <laughs> 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 In this moment sucks. I love I love my job, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. in this moment, especially after a good race, you know. Yeah, then you had confidence but, and you wanted to be there. Exactly. Yeah. But um, that's how it is. And, and then, then I went to Val de Sol. <laughs> I got even more uh, powered up for Val de Sol because of yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also nearly your home race. It's not far from your place. Exactly. I think Val di Sol is uh, the place where I raced uh, most often. Yeah. Because it's really close. It's just uh, one hour, one and a half hours from my hometown. Yeah. And, of course, racing at home uh, is, is so amazing. And Val di Sol... Uh, it's a good track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, a true downhill track. Yeah. yeah. I really loved it uh, this season yeah. because they uh, made some pretty cool uh, modification. Yeah. Uh, um, so the track went from, a, I don't know if I can say it, but from a almost, <laughs> what is, uh, doesn't matter. From a really oh, like, hard track to yeah, a, it was, uh, to a, it was almost to too much. Flow track. Yeah, it was yeah, almost exactly. too much before because it was just so rough and uh, so hard, and the the track was so beaten up that you almost could hardly ride yeah. it with any speed. Exactly, the hard thing uh, was always that everyone was a new run actually because the track yeah. was really soft and changed yeah. every run, and this year they made a really good uh, modification. That these uh, places would normally change, they they keep the same more or less. Yeah. And then you know what you expect on track. Yeah, yeah a bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. So then uh, another good race for you in Val d'Isle. Well, good. Yeah, good exactly. Qualifier. You had a difficult uh, time with oh. the qualifying. <laughs> well, that's another improvement. The qualifier of uh, Val di Sola, it's a big story. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, there was also um, pretty hard uh, weather conditions. Mm-hmm. And a few riders in uh, fr- uh, in qualify in front of me, when I had my my original start, they crashed, but I already, yeah. already, already started. And there was, I think, three red, red flags or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, normally it's not big problem. You go back up and make yeah, it's your, pretty pretty fast to get back run. up normally. Exactly. And the problem was there was so bad weather and there were lightnings and they had to stop the gondola. 
and wait that the, 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 the bad weather goes away. But this waiting was uh, really long. I think there was uh, yeah, it... 10, 15 riders who had to go back up. Yeah. And it raining, 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 and we had to wait. And there was yeah. lightnings and everything was stopped. And it started getting dark. And yeah, we thought if we <laughs> yeah, don't go up uh, now, if we don't go up now, uh, we, it, uh, we can't race. So the Italians were pretty creative. They they got a few shuttle services and brought us up uh, on a shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we actually uh, did it before uh, completely darknet, darkness. Yeah. <laughs> we had our qualifier run and it was really hard conditions. <laughs> Cuz yeah, it was late and and the, the track was uh, destroyed and yeah. really wet. And yeah, we we just thought, let's go down, get qualified, and that's it. And that's yeah. how also I wrote it. But of course, during the gray qualify, you still want to push. And and then I had a big, big mistake. I almost, yeah, I, I stopped and had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> And then I, uh, yeah, I, I went down pretty solid with no big expectation. I thought, oh, I hope I'm qualified. And then I was there and I was uh, ninth. So <laughs> yeah. It was uh, pretty um, unbelievable with to do a result with this run. But yeah, it was yeah. also a proof that uh, all the ri other riders before, they had the same trouble because normally when with a run like this, you don't even qualify. It was a really yeah. hard uh, qualifying. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be ninth, you must have been uh, pretty surprised. Yeah, extremely surprised. I was really almost sure that I would not be in the finals. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it was, un I, I still can't believe how hard the conditions have must be in also for, for the riders before. Yeah, it was super dark too. Yeah. Have you raced there? No, I didn't race there. I was uh, injured, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I was happy, of course, taking some other points in the qualifier. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the next day was race day. Perfect conditions, really good weather, and another good race run for me there. I got um, 13th. Sweet. So two and uh, two top 15 in a row. Exactly. Yeah. And that, and that's where it started. Maybe. Yeah, where I started a little bit to to know how to handle a situation when you're. In the top 20. Yeah, yeah. It became more comfortable. But Exactly. I was not so extremely uh, out of myself anymore. I, I said, okay, now I, I have the speed and I am there. I just have to bring it down. Yeah. And then from, I, from there, um, the next race would have been world champs probably. Um. Was there Lanzerheide still before? Oh, yeah, Lanzerheide, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you had a crash in Lanzerheide, I think. Yeah, it was not a crash. So, yeah, just to say, uh, yeah, I said I got more confident with the situation. Yeah. That's what I thought. Then I came to Lanzerheide and uh, I don't know, remember, I had also a good uh, qualifier there. Yeah. I think 14th or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the race, in the race, the confidence was maybe too much, <laughs> and <laughs> I slided and I came off track. Yeah. But I was really far off track, so I had to to walk back yeah, to yeah, get yeah. back into the track. And then, yeah, I restarted and I was still racing on race pace, but of course I lost this this too second there, time. and yeah, yeah. then it was over. Yeah, but still, um, it cannot always go perfect. No. 
especially in a in a weird season like this for me. Yeah, but then uh, that got you selected for the world champs, but you weren't sure originally if you were going to go because of work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there was a selection for the world champs. But somewhere I knew I I have to go, and I tried to, to organize it, but it was a it was a pretty hard uh, time outside work. Yeah. Uh, because many people who work they were in vacation, and so it was pretty hard to organize it. But I I could have done it and and went to world champs. And uh, Monson, and how did how did that one go? Yeah, I don't know. The race, maybe maybe I should have not gone to the World Champs if I think <laughs> now. <laughs> so but, pretty unlucky. Yeah, I had a, a pretty hard crash in uh, in practice. Yeah. What didn't stop me from going fast actually, but. Always a hard crash. It's always exhausting and yeah, and definitely puts a dent in the confidence. Exactly, you know how it is. And I don't remember. I was uh, was qualifying. Was was it raining also in qualify? Yeah, it rained rained pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was uh, really tough conditions in qualify. Yeah, and I think I finished thirty something. Yeah. Uh, but I knew the ne- and it, the qualifying world champs they it doesn't count so yeah. it was more just cruising and yeah having fun I don't know yeah, <laughs> you yeah. always want to push but you well, also it, don't want it to when it doesn't to count risk. it's hard hard to push as much yeah I know yeah yeah that's true and you push in a different way also if you want to a race yeah. day is is always different yeah yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, then we we came to to race day, where I felt uh, pretty good. Um, I had a really good run until my bad luck came. <laughs> um, yeah, I I I was jumping down of this big rock, uh, yeah. the Stevie Smith rock. It's yeah, called. It's, yeah. And that was this this little uh, wooden um, landing mm-hmm. with this angle. Yeah. And I was pretty fast on on the top of this um, rock, maybe faster than I was in practice. And I didn't have a point where I jump off because I was a little bit flying all over this rock. And that's why I landed earlier on this edge and I completely broke my wheel and (laughs) yeah, I had a puncher and I couldn't go on. Yeah. Yeah, I was bad luck, but this is also part of the game. Yeah, Yeah. And. I still have to say that I had a, a lot of fun. Of course, I was really pissed in the first moment, but the crowd was so amazing. Yeah, insane, yeah. And I was just uh, running down, and there was just almost partying with me. And yeah, yeah. it's it's <laughs> then, uh, a good atmosphere sometimes on the side of the track. It, really, even, really good. Even on a bad especially day, especially when you can interact with them, because normally you just go through and yeah, you don't yeah, even yeah, recognize. Yeah. Them. Yeah. If you go down this low. Yeah. You can have fun. <laughs> yeah, it's good. But yeah, of course, then I was pretty pissed because going all the way to Canada yeah. and for a puncher, you don't like to do that, but this happens. No, no. And then, then uh, Snowshoe, we've been through that story with the uh, car incident, yeah. the car. Uh-huh. And then uh, actually, you were pretty fast on the practice data in Snowshoe. Yeah, um, I had this uh, the the crash also on track. Yeah, I think it was on practice day. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, also, yeah. Yeah, I think it was on practice day, and that's where I I I had a knock on my head for the second time in this in this short term. Yeah. Uh, but I still was doing the 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 time training, and because I felt pretty good. And yeah. also the the speed was there. I I had a good time training. I think in the top ten also, or maybe yeah. tenth. Yeah. But then I was uh, lucky. Um, yeah, of course, it's also a point to say that in 
months at end and uh and especially in uh, uh snowshoe i was traveling then with you yeah and you the gt factory team and you helped me out and you also so gradually the, the physio from our team um, he helped me to 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 make the decision then uh, to not start because uh, yeah. he was a little bit observing me yeah, and yeah. i was uh in the afternoon and and there was a pretty big suspect of uh, concussion and that's i i still wanted to race uh, because you know, we race as we always want to race if somehow it can go. But yeah. um, I think it was a smarter decision to to not race and just uh, following the race uh, next to the track. Yeah, and it was then, a hard decision, but I had to make it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes uh, it's better to do that than take a risk and try and ride anyway. Used, exactly used to be, because... used to be everyone's uh, method just try and ride, but uh, it's mm-hmm. definitely not not the best way. You only got one head, so you gotta take care of it. Exactly. And yeah, you don't joke with your head. No. Because. Yeah. But yeah. uh. Yeah. So now I can say I'm thankful for for having me to make this uh, decision because. Yeah, you don't know what could yeah. have happened. So yeah. it's just a race. There are more racing races coming up, and you just hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, f- from from there, then you got a few offers from a few different teams. Yeah. yeah. So of course, this uh, really good season. F- um, did Did you expect to be in have- in that position or? Like, did you ever expect when? at the end, end of 2019 you'd be fielding offers from a few different teams? Uh, 100%. I was not expecting it uh, in the beginning of the season. And I was yeah. also not aiming it. So yeah. I did not think about it. But of course, um, I don't know how big teams make their decision to to to, to take a rider or... So I did not have any idea also after the good races. Yeah, yeah. But uh, of course, I'm traveling with the other riders and then they are telling, yeah, I have a team chat, I have a team chat. And and then at one point, of course, I also thought about it. Yeah, let's see uh, if there's a, a team also interested uh, in myself. And yeah, I was also a little bit... Uh, I was, I don't know, I just did not think too much about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I like this season, how I, I have done it last year. It was yeah, yeah. cool. And you have also advantages doing uh, doing everything by yourself. Yeah, but yeah. I would say overall, you have more uh, disadvantages. And it's much harder. That's why, yeah. That's why, of course, uh, I, I talk to everybody who... Uh, made me an offer yeah and yeah finally i took my decision and i'm with i'm your teammate now <laughs> yeah, yeah and i'm really happy sweet. about it decision. so <laughs> so why why did you choose gt in the end anyway <clears throat> um i really liked um i was really happy to to be at the last world cup uh, to spend the time with you yeah um because i got everybody to know I, I I saw how the team climate is, how 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 you live, how you are together, and how we are together. Yeah. And and I I, I really liked it, mm-hmm. but this was not my final decision. Um, there were some more aspects. I I said if I go to a team, I want to have these certain things. That means to be to keep on racing my jeans. <laughs> Of course, yeah, yeah. and to, and to be um, free, yeah. In a sense that I still can a little bit um, be how I am, like yeah, this yeah. little bit unprofessional and still, <laughs> guy who is just trying still, to ra- ride fast. Still working or 
what's ah, of yeah. course that's the the, the main uh, reason or yeah. the, the main thing what I was uh, watching for if I can still uh, go on with my work yeah and and uh, GT uh, told me there's there's no problem they told me of course if something goes not like it should go yeah then they of course we have to talk if it if it is because of the work if i'm not uh, concentrated enough on writing yeah, yeah um but they said of course we uh, we will try it and and we will uh, i can go on with my work do you feel like yeah. uh the work helps you to bring a more relaxed uh, mentality to the racing Well, I am pretty sure about that. Yeah. Um, because uh, the proof was was my, uh, my the last season was the proof that work doesn't really affect you in a negative way. For me, this was a proof. Of course, we have to keep saying that I'm really lucky with the situation how I can work. I still can focus on my biking. Yeah. With this one week, one week riding. And yep. if I if I would have to work from Monday to Friday every week, this would not work. Yeah. Because it's, it's really hard. But it's good for uh, so, most people to know that they can also work and ride and at a top exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's um. I think in general it's uh, it's good to have something to completely different. So that you don't have to think always about this routine, what you do every time. So yeah, yeah. it's the same with work. I'm also happy when I'm at work that I can go racing so I don't have to think on work anymore. Yeah. If you organize it in the right way, of course. And there's, okay, not, many, yeah. there's not many riders out there that uh, actually work. So it's uh, mm -hmm. pretty interesting to see. Yeah, this is uh, really interesting. I would. I don't want to say oh, I'm so good. I'm working and racing. This is completely not uh, no, no. What, what I want to do. But I actually think psychologically, it's really good. It's, yeah. It makes because you maybe also a little bit better relaxed, or how you say? Yeah, it. some more more relaxed because sometimes uh, it's pretty hard when all you focus on is riding, and you actually put too much focus on it, and you're pretty tired yeah. mentally as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. from putting everything on one thing exactly it is uh i think you are also you are actually also working with this wind tv stuff of course yeah. it's always in the bike circuit but it's yeah. a completely different uh, exercise how you say one yeah, thing yeah, is to yeah. ride the bike and the other yeah, one yeah. is working behind a computer and yeah. finding everything for interviewing i don't know what you think or I, if you also think that it's yeah, sometimes definitely uh, lifts the pressure off your shoulders for the racing, mm -hmm. for sure. And, uh, and it's good to put your focus in something else as well, just other than just racing. Otherwise, yeah. it's quite quite uh, intense just having everything everything rolling on racing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it um, really helps you also to. Uh, in one way, if maybe the racing is not going like you want, mm. and you maybe also for a longer period not there where you want to be, yeah, and you say, all right, so now it's not working uh, in in the racing, so I go to work and and do do my stuff there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's not all the pressure on this one thing what you do. Yeah, yeah for sure. But this this is just uh, my. Uh, perspective. I know that there are many people who say uh, I would never do this because if I if I do one thing, I want to do it good. But this is also what makes big pressure on you. Because and it, it becomes it goes, becomes easy to define yourself on your race results. Yeah. So you you almost value your own self only on your race results. If your last exactly. race is bad, you feel bad. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. For me, when I when I came back after months and then, and um, 
uh, snowshoe. Yeah. Of course, it was a really bad racing two weeks of racing for me because yeah. two yeah, yeah. zero points, let's say this. But then I came back, I went straight to work and I have forgotten everything. Yeah, it's good. It's interesting mm -hmm. how much uh, different approaches psychologically yeah. to racing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And in another point is also when it goes good, like in uh, Val di Sole or Andorra, it keeps you also on the ground. It's just because you do two times top 15, you're not uh, yeah, yeah. a cooler person or something. Yeah, you yeah. still have to work and you know that life is not just... Just bikes. Fun, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. It's, it's good. I like it to have these two lines if I can yeah. manage it. Cool. Uh, well, um, going forward into this season... Uh, what what do you see happening for the the uh, coming future? Do you think we're going racing this year, or what what do you think? So it's incredibly hard uh, to say how how this is gonna end <laughs> this season think... or this not season. I don't know how you would call it. Yeah, because <laughs> so we were in. Uh, at the testing in Portugal this season and we were just <laughs> yeah, saying we, we were joking we were already yeah joking but already saying uh, maybe the first World Cup but yeah. it was not ever so serious we were just more saying it yeah, yeah but then it actually came reality and there was a second <laughs> World Cup cancelled the third one the fourth one yeah and and if it goes on like that um, of course there will be no race this season, I guess. What I really hope is, because I understand the situation, it, we need to be strict on it. But I hope uh, that uh, we humans, we're not uh, doing too much. Because yeah, yeah. I'm stopping all the economy and, and yeah, yeah. stopping everything. We, we break also a lot what... Uh, yeah, yeah. People it does damage to in the past. everyone it's as well. It's damaging yeah. so much and I think we have to find a middle way. Yeah. For example, I don't know if you look at the racing, maybe we should go racing without uh, crowd. Spectator. yeah. Because without the exactly spectators, because there is also the Red Bull TV and they can follow it uh, in the internet. Okay, yeah. then... You have to do this compromise, compromise to not but be maybe, at the race. Maybe it's cool if they can do that and also uh, make live the qualifying as well for all the people. Exactly. Yeah. That would be a, a good uh, idea. Yeah. But so there's it, it can go in so many directions. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to... I don't uh, really know. The biggest really, problem for me is that if the people can't travel from some countries, mm -hmm. that will be the biggest problem. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe they, they stop blocking the lockdown just in the country, but they yeah. don't open the borders. Or... Yeah, yeah. And like Australia or New Zealand, it's a long way to travel if they're not already in Europe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think but... we're now on a point where it's really crazy. Yeah. But it, uh, at least now it seems to be improving a bit, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's uh, good, but. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so because there's every day is a new surprise almost, especially yeah, yeah. how it was here in Italy. Every day new rules and in the beginning especially. So if you ask me just for my feeling, I. Maybe they they do a few races by really the end of the of the year. Yeah. You think uh, you'll be back at the restaurant anytime soon? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> That's another point. It's it's uh, really hard now. Yeah. We have now in Munich. We have the restaurant open, but just uh, for to go. Yeah. And my sister is managing that at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, but I don't know when it re it really will open. Well, yeah. they open also 
here now on Monday. So the 11th. Yeah. But it's hard because the the they have do you have to put the tables really far away from everyone. So two meters distance and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a, a reaction, but if it helps, I don't know, because especially here, it's so much tourism. Yeah. And we are working a lot. So in Italy, we are working a lot with tourists. Mm -hmm. You can say this. Yeah. But if nobody's coming, then the, the restaurant will be empty. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully, not. hopefully it, <laughs> it improves in the next weeks, because it seems like the last few weeks, it, it can change week to week. And, yeah. Uh, that's hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully it comes better in the next few weeks, and we can get back yeah. to normal and get back racing soon. Do Do you think that we will race this year? Uh, I'm not optimistic, but um, um, I think possible in in late September or October, November. But then, okay, then you got to find places where you can race. Then, yeah, yeah, which is difficult as well. So, hopefully. But but the amount that it really changed so. week to week the past six or seven weeks, it could be that we're racing sooner mm -hmm. than later. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's hard, yeah. Cheers, cheers for uh, joining us for our first episode of Win or Lose. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Giannis. Hang on, I. I so somebody is also asking a question about you. He, he, I have oh, I got to, a question for me. Yeah, there's a question for you yeah. from uh, Mikkel239 from yeah. Instagram. All right. So he's asking, you married to, a, to an Austrian yeah. exactly girl. And he uh, is interested how good your German is <laughs> by the time. Nicht, nicht good. <laughs> <laughs> Nicht good. <laughs> Nicht good. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's about as good as it is. <laughs> yeah, but you you said you took some lessons. I did a couple of lessons, yeah. I need to do some more though. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And then uh the, the past well, five weeks I've pretty much just been digging every day, so that's all I've been doing. To to try and yeah. make some decent trails here in Munich. Because there's not that's, much. Uh, cool. There's yeah. now you're making the Munich, the Munich biking a lot better now. <laughs> yeah, if, when you come back, we got some stuff to ride, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But it's uh, -huh. uh, I did 25 days straight, and then my back was too sore, so I had to have one day off, and I've had uh, oh, one really? day off, one day off in, <laughs> in five weeks. <laughs> so not it's, bad. It's, <laughs> it's good training actually. Yeah, that's yeah. that's been my training yeah. for the past weeks. So. Making cool. the most of it, of a bad situation, yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining us on the first episode of uh, Win or Lose podcast. Cheers, yeah. Johannes. Thank you, and, Win. Uh, and I hope by the time uh, you will uh, teach me to to talk better English, because it's really know, got really bad. Your, your English <laughs> is getting better, mate. The uh, the uh, team camp. I know. The team camp was a while ago, though. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's why I lost it already again. <laughs> yeah, but uh, all right. Cheers, and I don't know who will be the next guest for the the uh, podcast, but uh, put a comment below who I should interview for the next one. Cheers. <laughs>